My name is Dale Vince. I'm the founder of Ecotricity. I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to build a wind-powered car. It'll be an electric car charged from the wind, so there's zero emissions from it. I want to build a sports car, out-and-out -out sports car. That's the challenge, a wind-powered car. The big thing that's happened really now is that we've bonded the battery box in, so it's in for real now. The whole of the front end of the car is now finished and everything's going on for real now. The challenges we're facing with the electrical side, which Tim's facing, and which we're getting to grips with really, is not realising the just amount and volume of work that he has to do. What Tim's doing is new technology and he's not repeating something that he's done before, he's inventing something and we're expecting him to invent to a deadline, and of course you can't invent to a deadline. Trying to project manage new technology and, and engineering and electronics and programming that there's a guy racking his brain over trying to invent is very difficult. I can't go and beat him with a stick and say, you must have it done, because it, it just won't work. But at the same time, I can't say, there you go, just do it in your own time and, you know, when you're ready, we'll be ready. So there's a little bit of frustration in both directions. We're getting frustrated because we haven't got our node sensors yet. And he's getting frustrated because he hasn't given us his, our node sensors yet. We're doing more cosmetic stuff for the build than I was expecting we were going to do for the first running car. Jim's been concentrating on the detail in his direction lever and also inventing the charger lead recoil mechanism, which he's using his favorite SLS system. So they'll be going up to Leeds shortly. The Leeds people are some folks that we've worked with over the last four or five years. My name is Andrew Marsden. Uh, I'm the Rapid Manufacturing Manager uh, based in Keyworth Institute at the University of Leeds. The Selective Laser Sintering process uh, uses a powder bed um, and a laser, and the laser uh, provides the heat to fuse the, the powder together, thereby enabling you to construct three-dimensional objects in a very limited period of time. We um, start with the, the native CAD data sliced up into very thin layers, and these thin layers are um, used to construct the 3D object. The bed temperature where we do the construction um, is around about 175 degrees centigrade. Um, this is just below the melt point of the, of the material. The additional heat is provided by the laser to produce the melt and bond the layers together. When the process has finished, we remove loose powder. Um, literally, the parts are ready for use at that point. The freedom to create uh, imp impossible shapes is well documented. Uh, this, is, this is an intrinsic part of the process. Jim and Ian um, recognise the importance of using these processes. Good designers can, can harness this and, and make best use of it. When this car hits the road, you know, it'll be, it'll be very successful and there'll be a bunch of people out there that would say, hey, yeah, I could have one of those. That would be cool. I came here to meet a man from the sun today, actually. Funnily enough, yeah, they saw the Guardian piece, and we thought, well, hey, there's a new audience, and we should engage with these people uh, because they, you know, exactly the kind of people that that need to get it, need, you know, need to be informed and and uh, enabled to help us make change. The whole environment movement has got a demographic, but that needs to be broader. You know, we need Daily Mail readers and Sun readers and people like that, you know, to get it and and and. and uh, it's kind of part of what we're doing here with the car is trying to show people that you've even got to give things up to uh, to live a green lifestyle that you know that's not all about sacrifice and actually you can have fun along the way and uh, and I think too many people are, are put off too many you know let's say mainstream people are put off green things because they think I have to give something up you know, do do without something you know? and our message is no you don't you know? actually you can have a whole lot of fun and uh, and it, it can be a better life actually. I know what the hold-up is, but there's an awful lot of progress when you look at it, awful lot. Ah, it's just silly to think it's not going to happen in the next couple of months. There's no drop-dead date, we just face what we face when we're facing it. I don't want to predict what might be happening in weeks or months' time. I'm confident we'll have the car running in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs>